Before we start, this video is sponsored by Moon Milk, a healthy spice mix containing ashwagandha, which will improve your sleep, focus, and overall mental and physical well-being. So in this video, I want to talk about three different ways in which you can use ChatGPT to support your thematic analysis. Uh, importantly, in this video, I will not be talking about using ChatGPT to develop your codes, to code your data. I do have uh, other videos in which I explain how to use ChatGPT for different stages of coding, and uh, as well as a video in which I generally go through the whole process of thematic analysis and explain uh, the role of coding in the process. So feel free to go and watch these videos if you're not uh, sure what I mean. Uh, but otherwise, as I said, I'm assuming you already have some codes. Now you're thinking of, of how to use ChatGPT to further assist the analysis, to maybe develop your themes, or maybe you have your themes and you, you want to uh, organize and sort the, the sub themes. So th these are the things I'll discuss in this video. I'll talk about three different ways. I'll talk about three different stages at which you may uh, use ChatGPT support, as well as a different extent to which you will be relying on this tool, on ChatGPT in your analysis. For the purpose of this video, we'll be uh, working on a study, on a hypothetical study of leaders, educational leaders, and we want to find out their lived experiences in face of a crisis, any kind of a crisis, whether it's some conflict, some war, uh, maybe economic crisis, any crisis, we want to know their lived experiences uh, and maybe how they how they face these uh, uh, these crises or how they respond to them. Uh, for this purpose, I developed a list of codes. Uh, these codes describe uh, various challenges that they may face, various uh, uh, good practices or ways to overcome challenges, some suggestions they made. So there is just a long list of codes. And uh, this is our starting point. From this, we'll be working uh, on these three different ways how we can use ChatGPT from now on. So the first one I want to discuss is how to use ChatGPT to develop uh, to develop themes from your codes. So you have some codes, you don't know what themes there are, and you want to use ChatGPT to develop these themes. Uh, importantly, it's important to point out at this uh, at this moment uh, that this is not my favorite way, and and to be honest, I don't see. Uh, myself using ChatGPT to decide what themes it can see in my data. I feel like this is the point where, and you know that if you watch my videos, uh, where we are responsible for our data. Themes are not something, as I often say, not something that just emerges magically. It's something that we decide on. We know our study and we know what we want to focus on. We have some knowledge, we have some background knowledge. We usually choose the themes that will be used to tell the story of our data. I'm not a fan of uh, of this idea of something or someone deciding on my themes, but I know that lots, uh, many of you uh, asked about this, and maybe some of you will have a way to to use uh, uh, to use this software, this this platform for this uh, purpose. So prior to recording, I developed some uh, some prompts. So I'll just paste this prompt into my ChatGPT uh, at the moment, and uh, this is what it says. Uh, the following is a list of codes that were created when qualitatively coding the content of several interviews with educational leaders. The reason I'm ex uh, I'm explaining that I'm qualitatively coding is because remember ChatGPT has all this background knowledge, obviously uh, drawn from the online sources. So if I say that it's a qualitative analysis, chances are it already n starts to kind of understand that these are codes and what happens next. So. Uh, here I'm explaining that the purpose of the study is to understand their experiences with various forms of uh, crisis, and the interviews revolved around such experiences. They were talking about, uh, so I'm not uh, pasting the transcripts, but still I, I feel like it is maybe a good idea to give this overall feel of what this is about. Uh, because ChatGPT can be extremely um, complex and almost intelligent feel uh, at least that's how it feels or it can be extremely stupid <laughs> so uh, so that's why I do this uh, they were talking about various challenges they face as well as sharing strategies to overcome such challenges they also made some suggestions for how to overcome these challenges as well as other comments looking at the following list of codes please remember about my please I always say please um, Please try to come up with two to three main themes that are present and then allocate the codes to these respective themes. So basically, I want to make sure that it also puts the codes under each theme. So now what I'll do, I'll copy and paste 
uh, the random list of codes that I developed prior to the video. So here they are, press enter. It's a long list of codes, as you see, a long list of codes, staffing shortages, budget constraints, lots of things. Uh, to be honest, I also use ChatGPT to, de <laughs> to develop this list of codes. I explained that, that I wanted to develop a random list of codes, describing practices and so on and so forth. So obviously this is for presentation. Why uh, do this myself if there's around 100 codes, if I can use ChatGPT? So now I pasted this and look at what it's giving me. So uh, it's also kind of commenting on, you know, things that it, it things it found. So it's evident that educational leaders are focused on challenges. So, uh, so it kind of uh, picked on the challenges, which is good, obviously, and strategies. So these are, in fact, the codes that I pasted. So, uh, so here are the themes that it's given us: institutional preparedness and resilience, for example. And and then it's listing all the codes uh, from my list and and allocating them. Another theme: uh, equitable and effective education delivery. This is important. So it kind of looks good. Again, oh, it's still working. By the way. It probably uh, would make somebody happy, lots of you happy, but do remember what I said before about you being in charge and you deciding basically what you want your study to be. For my liking, these are quite general, I'd say an abstract, so community, collaboration, well-being. They kind of look good, but maybe it's a personal choice, but as I usually explain, I like my themes to be kind of actionable and specific. So. I'd rather have themes that say, you know, challenges, strategies, and then listing these things rather than having something like preparedness and resilience, and then listing both the, the good things, the challenges, the suggestions related to to resistance, uh, resilience. It's possible to do it. It's okay to do it. Some people do it. I personally prefer to break these things down and put them into groups of uh, where they belong. So whether they are good or bad, I don't like to mix them all which uh, leads us to the second way in which we can use ChatGPT in our analysis. So the second way in which I can uh, we can use ChatGPT for our analysis is to use it to uh, group codes under predefined themes. Predefined themes. So that's, as I said, this is something I'd be more likely to do. So I may have my own ideas for what I'm focusing on in my study, what my themes are going to be, what my story is going to be. Uh, as I said, I want it to be about challenges they face, I want it to be about strategies they use, and I want it to be about suggestions they make. So uh, so looking at my, uh, my codes, I may have uh, come to such conclusion, and now I just simply want ChatGPT to decide which codes go where, into which one of these categories. So for this, my prompt will be different. Uh, now, uh, considering that I've already explained everything, so it still has all these instructions, all that knowledge, in this database, I'll just add, uh, I'll just ask it to put them into these groups. So that's what, what I'll type. Now, can you group the codes that I listed into challenges, strategies to overcome challenges and suggestions. And now it's, uh, it's generating its new response, uh, grouping what I gave it uh, into challenges, strategies and suggestions. I'm assuming it may struggle with some of them because the way it created the, the example codes was not exactly how I would normally do it. They were kind of less descriptive than I like them to be. So now it's basically probably struggling a little bit with its own uh, categorization or its own wording uh, for the codes but but you can see that it's working and it's doing something so so if you have this idea you have lots of codes and you're trying to group them into these ideas you can use chat GPT as you can see as grouping them into challenges strategies and then soon it will start uh, also listing the different uh, suggestions uh, to be honest again it's kind of more convenient but at the same time I'm not sure it's that useful and that helpful because if you do have your codes you know your codes you understand them and you have this idea of grouping them into challenges and suggestions and, and whatever else uh, it means that uh, arguably you may not need help from ChatGPT unless you literally just want to save you, yourself a couple of minutes of your time 
Before we continue, remember that if you require more detailed, more tailored assistance, you can uh, feel free to explore the different services on my website. Uh, these include data analysis services and a range of uh, private tutorials on Zoom, including data analysis tutorials where we can look at your data or you'll tell me about your study. I'll ask you questions, we'll brainstorm, I'll offer suggestions and ways to improve uh, your analysis or at least to move it forward. I really enjoy these sessions, my students do too, and they are always super productive and exciting. So again, if you're struggling, uh, feel free to explore that website. Now let's get back to my video. And this takes us to the final way in which, uh, which I wanted to discuss in this video, namely uh, grouping your sub-themes into categories. So this is something I've actually uh, used ChatGPT for several times because I think it's pretty good at doing this task. And what I mean by this is that uh, I often explain in my videos that I like to group things further if there is a uh, a possibility, a chance to do it. So if I have a long list of challenges, for example, uh, rather than keeping that long list of challenges, I always feel like it's good to, whenever possible, to develop maybe some more subheadings. Uh, so, so to group challenges into different groups of challenges, categories of challenges, rather than keeping that long list. This can relate to anything. It can be about your suggestions, it can be about your strategies for overcoming challenges, anything. Uh, at all. I generally like to give this structure, it, I feel like it looks good, it looks clear, it's easier to follow, uh, among the reasons, these are among the reasons why I like doing that. So so that's why and that's uh, how you can also use uh, ChatGPT. For this my prompt uh, will be simple, so I'll basically just say something like uh, the following is a list of challenges educational leaders face. Can you can you please group them into several categories for me? It should be okay. Uh, then, of course, paste the list of challenges. It should. This should be okay, but it's uh, it's always a very random thing with ChatGPT. Sometimes it's okay doing that. Sometimes I will have to point out that I want it to actually list the codes into each under each group it's pretty random it also depends what you fed into chat gpt prior to this so we've already been working on these things here on this screen so i'm assuming it should be okay but if i if i just started uh, i would have to give all that background that i previously uh, provided so what the study is and i'm doing qualitative uh, analysis and all that but here it hopefully should be okay so this is the list of just challenges um, let's see if that's, yeah, these are the challenges. And now it's grouping financial and resource challenges, staffing and personal issues. See, that's brilliant. That's uh, what I like uh, about ChatGPT and that's how I feel it's doing a pretty good job. Sometimes it's giving uh, weird ideas for these groups. Uh, sometimes uh, there are things that I feel like there are too many overlaps and sometimes uh, I take this later and I kind of uh, fix and, and work on it and quite often I develop and reduce a number of groups but it often does give me some starting point in, uh, in thinking. Uh, so I believe that's a very good thing and that's a very nice way to use ChatGPT and at the same time of course you still, uh, you're still in full control, you're not really giving the whole analysis to, to chat GPT. So there is no, no problem uh, with this kind of thing or any ethical, you know, consideration. So, uh, so in this way is basically a very good tool for maximizing the value of our own work, just like any software that we normally use is. So this is it. Uh, I hope that you learned something new. Please like the video if you did. Uh, share it with others if you know somebody who may benefit from this kind of instruction and let me know in the comments what you think let me know if you have any other questions or if you want me to record a video about other ways in which you can use ChatGPT for your data analysis there are so many different ways so many different stages where you can uh, bring it into your analysis if you have any specific questions or requests do let me know in the comments